poet of the evening, and I think you know who it's going to be. This shy cat, have you hit your own button yet? Hit your button. No, not me. This motherfucker. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is one show? He has hosted over 600 shows for us motherfuckers. And I had to trick him into putting one damn show up. Now, because we're running late, this asshole, who is beautiful in spirit and in looks, was like, we don't have to do my poem. I was like, motherfucker, you're going to do your poem. So it has been an awesome, awesome evening. Let's give a big round of applause for every single poet who performed here tonight. If you like what you've heard, go to Indie Feed. Go to Indie Feed. Other pieces by these poets exist there. And tell other people about Indie Feed. We're going to get this revolution going. Now that we've applauded all the poets, let's give our biggest round of applause for the main reason we're all here tonight, performing a piece which will appear on Indie Feed. Please welcome up my light, my loins, my mongo, West Mongo Charlie! I am so, so honored and humbled to be in this room with all of you. This has been an amazing experience for the shy guy that sits behind the microphone uh, and is able to do things over and over again until he gets them right to actually do something live. I'm not a frequent performer, and Kristen has kind of made me do this tonight. So, all right, so this is a piece. This is a piece that I, that I wrote specifically for tonight, and it is in honor of this city, which I love. And it is in honor of the poets of this city who come here from all over the world and do amazing work. So this is called Manhattan's Arms, and it's in four parts. He decided to keep the horns that broke through his forehead one muddy spring morning. What sense, he thought, in being appalled at those things that spring unexpectedly from our flesh. For the pain and the sting when the dry skin first split was exquisite. And soon those two stout blossoms of bone felt the stir of every breath of wind. On silent nights, he would trace their contours with trembling caresses. And in the morning, he would take delight at the torn pillowcases and the lightly drifting down on his lips. And although to all the world he appeared content, inside, he began to tire of sunshine. Huh. The smooth foreheads of the farmers made his shoulders tremble, and the weight of his baseball cap on his forehead became an ache that only concrete and glass could assuage. Huh. So fall found him on a train to Manhattan, neon gleaming off creamy bone through smoky glass. On the city streets, he merited hardly a second glance from the hurried crowds. In a world of women with tattooed faces and old men with pierced eyebrows, he blended in and took joy in being a freak of no particular note. Ah. And the seasons washed the earth clean of his memory. For a few years, there were false sightings. A visitor to the city thought they saw him across a crowded city intersection or from, an, uh, for, from a passing bus. And for a time, they squinted, and they looked, and they tried to see. In the city of the dead, you must wait until the last person on earth forgets your name. And every year in Manhattan, those with horns and tails and fins step down from buses or emerge blinking from taxi cabs. The city opens its arms and they emerge into the cavernous streets. In Manhattan, you can wander forever and never tread the same streets twice. 
there is always piano music drifting through an open window, and laughter, always laughter. For in the city of the dead, they are always smiling, waiting for the last person they know to forget their names, and listening in coffee shops for their new names to be spoken. The day came when for 24 hours, no one looked at his horns. No one looked and no one looked away. The day came when he forgot who he was and he longed again for the world to find him appalling. And so he found a bar stool in the Bowery where he could sit unnoticed. He closed his eyes and he opened his thighs to God. And when he awoke, autumn had chilled the air and the night, full of unfamiliar words, weighed heavily on his chest. His forehead, now unbroken and healed, caused him to weep. He cried until sunset, invisible now to the crowds. He cried until his name was gone. He cried until he forgot his home. He cried until the tears washed the last of the words away. He cried until midnight. He cried until there were wings. He cried until his shadow flickered across the stage. May the horns that brought us here tonight become the wings that carry us lightly across the moon. May we continually cry out for the universe to wound us. May we lie naked on park benches and lift our heels to expose our vulnerability to God. For we are poets. Yeah. <laughs> For we are poets. Our words are a mountain that we will climb forever, reach the top, and say, Hell no, man, we will defy the air, for we are still going up. For we are poets who demand that the universe assemble itself under our souls. We are poets. New York City is our goddess who nourishes us on a teat of anonymity. And her streets are our horned god who drags us by our heels from where we tried to hide and splits us open with his lust. We are poets. Our bellies are full of butterflies and blackberries to be birthed in a big bang that starts the traffic humming. One butterfly to land on the backs of sleeping lovers and one butterfly to ignite the neon. For we are poets. Nourished by the liquid heart of this city, we dry our faces on a cloak of stars and we fall to earth on a black Central Park night. Unwounded by the lightning, the moon between our knees and the gods staring amazed from their rooftop balconies. We are poets and we are hungry. Our blank pages ache for violation. Our hearts have tired from sunshine, tongues longing for tongues, our voices crack and fail and try again. We are poets and may we leave here tonight unsatisfied. <laughs> Mango's gonna be here for another week, so come.